here to talk about a little bit of Dota. The teams are getting themselves set up. I want to start beginning to talk about LFY versus TNC. This is a matchup that I am so excited to watch because of LFY's performance in the group stage. What about TNC? <coughs> TNC is... One, four, three, seven, the Western captain going across the ocean, captaining the C team to a, not only qualifying for TI, but now the upper yeah. bracket. Tell me about TNC, because they barely made it into the top. They I, were just I, I talked to Thieman actually before he joined TNC. This was yeah. uh, when we were at the Kiev Major. And he was telling me, I have, I have a plan, and it's either going to go really, really well or really, really poorly. And I had no idea where, where he was going to go. And then a few days later, it was announced that he was joining TNC. Are you talking about 1437 or Demon? Uh, 1437. Okay, you said Demon. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was I meant, confused. Demon was last I, year. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, I, said, I think I said Demon. And then you yeah. may have lied yeah. to us. Well, it was, it was 1437 talked about how he was yeah. going to do this crazy, crazy thing. I was like, oh my god, I didn't really want to ask him. Because if you wanted to tell me, he would have told me. And then, of course. Uh, like a couple weeks after, he went to China uh, with them, and they got second place, only losing the liquid. So I was like, "Wow, this is pretty good." And he actually, like, that team actually just needed a captain like him. They've been playing together. They're three cores since last year's right, uh, Raven, Cuckoo, and uh, Sam H. Yep. So it just seems like, as we said, they needed a uh, they did captain a and uh, brief stint on Fnatic this year that didn't work out, oh, yeah. and they decided to bring it back on TNC. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's kind of funny how you like. Two years in a row, a Western player goes over there and captains TNC, and they, you know, they brought out some really great, surprising results. It could be that they just like lack the captainship there uh, in maybe that team. That's what um, who was talking about that yesterday? The execration team. He said like they or Abed even. He was talking about how they just take things a little less seriously there than Western teams and yeah. uh, than China teams as well. And having that Western leadership or a different style has really like brought them all together. Yeah, I remember hearing the, sort of the same analysis when Demon joined the team, that they just needed someone to have a little bit more captainship of the team. And watching them, at, that TI was such a blast. Because, I mean, as you saw in these matches, the, a lot of the teams when they won, it was sort of a, okay, let's just stay focused. But, I mean, TNC lost their minds, like, every single win. Like, every single win that year looked as though they had just won the main event entirely. That's the beauty of the underdog, right? Yeah, They, yeah. they never expect to win, so when they do... They get ultra excited. The teams that are the favorites and the teams that are the favorites to win this tournament, every time they play a game, they play like a little scared, like, oh, I hope I don't lose. Yeah. Dude, I, I, talk to me about that sort of fire that comes in when you're the underdog, about that feeling. I mean, is it a sense of comfort? Is it a sense of motivation? Because I, mean, I, I don't know if I can speak about that. Oh, I've never been there before. I've, it's I been a while know. since I've been an underdog. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of, it's uh, sad in a way because it's, it's, it's just a feeling that actually brought us to competing and like wanting to go to TI to win games. And like after we won TI3, going into TI4, it was exactly the same feeling like we just didn't want to lose. And yep. if we won, it was like, okay, we should have won this game. And it's just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think the last time I was an underdog was in 2014 at the Summit when we played up against DK in the Grand Finals, which we were just, we were happy to even be in the Finals at that point. And we just, we were, we were content with our performance and we just wanted to prove ourselves and do our best. And we actually ended up winning. And it, it made that victory feel so much better. And getting to like see these feelings from TNC and uh, the other teams that have had these feelings here now, it's just amazing. And that is what's it's fun to watch as well. It's not fun to yeah. watch that team as, oh, we just won a game, right? <laughs> but we were it's supposed to win. <laughs> Fly, was, nice. Fly talked about that a bit yesterday in his yeah. play interview. He was talking about how it's really, you know, it's very mental. It's, you know, being able to yeah. motivate yourself even when you're on the top and how it's, you know, it's all up here. In terms of that type of momentum, it's LFY versus TNC. Do you think TNC still views themselves as the underdog? Do you think there's more pressure they're putting on themselves now that they're getting consistent results? I don't think so. I think that being in the upper bracket, there's that little bit of ease where you know you do a second chance uh, tomorrow in the lower bracket. But I think I don't think they consider themselves a favorite. I don't think they consider themselves an underdog. They're probably pretty confident going into this matchup, and I expect it to be decently close. But yeah. still leaning towards LFY. I think they're just super impressive. Group stages are a lot different though than the yeah. BO3s because you have the preparation involved that you can prepare. Like yeah. we saw DC. Versus IG Vitality, DC make quick work, and I think a lot of it, like, what was really good at preparing, I think, for, like, yeah. one certain team, whereas... OG, OG as well. Yeah. They looked very prepared oh, yeah. for their draft. Mm -hmm. Whereas the group stage is a little bit, just a lot more cha chaos. Yeah, I, I don't think there's an esport in the world that doesn't have that quality, where if you're playing a lot of matches in a row, 
It's a lot about fundamentals. It's a lot about what you've automated through your practice. The group stage yeah. is mostly about focusing on yourself and making yes. sure that you're playing a solid enough game to you know get a good scoring going into the main stage. But main stage, you really get to like, pick apart your opponent and find out their weaknesses and try to exploit those. And you know, we've gotten the chance to see LFY perform extremely well in the group stages and to get even more insight into LFY, we're gonna go ahead and head over to Jack's corner, the corner where we get to envy Jack's tailored international suit. Yeah. Oh, I want that so badly. It's, I was looking at this, have you seen this? It's, it's the Aegis tie pin as well. No. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no tie, so you're slacking a bit, Jack, but uh, step in the right direction. I love it, I'm very envious, and I'm your host machine to hopefully pick this, uh, this brain just a little bit, get some insight into that Chinese scene. And I think the first question, as basic as it may seem, is just, was this expected from your perspective, from the scene's perspective, LFY's 13-0 run into the group stage? Uh, not by most. Uh, even on the Chinese panel, like Lanham and some of the other uh, yeah. players here didn't, and uh, panelists didn't really expect them to do that well. Then again, it depends on who you ask, because uh, if you ask Newbie for the last month or two, you ask them who's been the strongest team they've practiced yeah. against in China, LFY comes to the top of their list. So um, I think, yeah, they surpassed some expectations. We'll see if they can continue. TNC is known kind of as a China slayer in Chinese okay. people, so we'll see if they can get past that. I mean, that's kind of good in one way that we weren't, it wasn't just one side underestimating them. It was just across the board underestimating LFY and their potential currently about to be doing battle versus TNC but more of some kind of uh, the fun insight that we wouldn't otherwise get now Jack because you were telling me uh, albeit briefly that there are a lot of nicknames in China now this is not just a nickname as in machine which I've made when I was 11 and it shames me every day but more of like a it's like a badge of honor yeah you have an ID and then of course the people give you a nickname and yeah. uh, LFY has a lot of them uh, I guess we'll start with uh, DDC the captain um, he has been he's one of three players to have been to every single TI as a player I think along with Kuroki and Puppy yeah. um, and so his nickname has become basically tickets because he always seems to get tickets to whatever event he's been to every single Valve event also except the Kiev Major um, and I think most of them have been through qualifiers as well so he always punches tickets. he's called tickets some, some, yeah yeah <laughs> Um, then now uh, we have Inflame. So uh, Inflame is known as either the Little Emperor or the Little Boss. The Little Boss is the one I've been hearing more uh, recently, or just the boss, because he is dating his boss, uh, Ruru of, of, uh, of LGD, uh, who's also known as the Empress in China. So he's known as the boss. Everybody just kind of calls him the boss. He's the boss yeah. by and dating his boss. Basically, it's also gossip kind of like in the corner. This our, is a little gossip corner gotta now. Gotta keep our distance from him. You know, he's the boss. We can't. We gotta make sure he stays happy. Okay. Um, and then uh, Super has been known for a couple of years by uh, uh, basically his friends and people who know him as the Bun because uh, they think that you know his cheeks resemble kind of steamed buns a little bit. <laughs> this is amazing. So sorry to clarify, he's called the Bun. Yeah. That's, I, it's, there are worse nicknames out there, but there are better ones too. But uh, possibly the best and worst one at the same time goes to uh, Monet um, because Monet in Chinese the, the way they've said it is Monaitre, which in Chinese means something grabby. Uh, basically, where are we going, Jack? Where are you taking this? Basically, to uh, cop a feel upstairs. So that's <laughs> that was so beautifully put. That's like when your dad's giving you the birds and the bees. <laughs> yeah, he's also the youngest player on the team. So, uh, so just so so Monet, and because I'm already on thin ice, just to clarify, his nickname is kind of cop copping a feel. Yeah. Well, I think we've learned enough. Um, Sean, you've got a beautiful smile on your face. Uh, <laughs> Do you feel like you've learned a lot today? <laughs> We're gonna head over to Jack's corner to get some insight into LFY. Hey, you know that you know, counts. You know what the fans call him? They call him the Bun. The Bun. <laughs> there was a little bit of the face. Beginning. <laughs> like, and you just kept going. You know what they call him, Little Boss? I was like, why, why? Jack? I want to know the reason why. Cause he's dating his boss. Just what a corner. Dude. One of the best corners of the entire event. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're going to just reemphasize that LFY is really, 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 really good at Dota. And I got to say, we've been talking about the Chinese players' Dota games. I think the memes out of China might be the best in the entire world. Can we go back to the corner real quick? Or is Jack? Oh, he's Jack gone. No, Jack's he's leaving. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> when is the next China, versus China game? I know. I can't wait. I mean, we're going to have Invictus versus Newbie uh, in the winner's bracket at some point. Not today, but we need Jack back. LGD VP. LGD VP. Yeah. Jack's Corner is coming back oh, next series. Oh, Jack, yes, give us some insight. We need to get some of the Polish crew out here to give us the, the insight into VP now. I don't know. I think the Chinese meme game is just on it's, another level. It's powerful. It really is. It really is kind of depressing over here in the West. Yeah. Maybe we should start to like, copy it and make nicknames for each other, like new ones. Yeah, like PJ Spice Sol. it up a bit. Let's get real creative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, are there any good nicknames in the West? <sighs> 
Officer Mulaney. That's an old one. That's from TI3. Oh. Oh, do you know about the story? No. no. Oh. Oh. No. Do we have time? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Let me check. Yeah, hell yeah, we have time, Merlini. <laughs> Tell us why you're Officer Merlini. Okay, Merlini. so Puppy and myself had a little scuffle back in, back in the old days. Don't it's Probably say. 2013. A scuffle? We, That's such well, a wild we used, term. We used to be, he used to be my captain. We used to play on the same team, and then oh. I stopped playing for a bit, and then he went on to uh, be on a very successful team with Navi. However, right. there was this one incident. I, I used to do a series called Merlini's Mailbag, and people would mail me questions about whatever. What, like physically mail you? No, email Okay. Me. Email, come on. Right, okay. <laughs> they would email me questions about things that they thought were interesting. I would sift through maybe 25 to 30 a week. And there was one particularly interesting one. It's like, oh, there was a series in between Navi and I forget the other team. And there was this particular moment in the game where, well, interrupted by the horn. Okay, I'll, I'll try and finish. Come on, come on. Uh, so there was a particular moment in the game where Puppy had paused the game and then the outcome of the fight had changed what I thought was com just completely changed. Uh, like the puppy pause. The puppy pause. It was Tactical infamous pause. puppy pause. And there was like a Nyx that was invis, and he knew that he was invis, so he kept pinging on them, except Havos wasn't responding. So then everything just changed. There was like a blink, there was like a four staff, there was a lasso, there was just like a sentry war popped down all in a matter of a second. And then he claimed that Havos had mouse issues, and I claimed that they had kind of seen what was going on, kind of altered their play a little bit. So ah. that was a very nice way of putting it. You accused them of. Cheating, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he... Like a true officer. And then when he Skype messaged me, he was like, you know, I would never do something like that. And then oh. I'm like, dude, I'm just calling out what I, what I see. Like, I, I know you as a person, but... And, and how did officer emerge out of that? I don't know. That was... He, puppy broke the law. The Dota law. There it is. Officer Merlini will be in charge. We shall not step out of line. The horn has sounded. We now know that our very first best of three is about to get underway. Let's introduce our first team, LFY. Why? A team who previously may have been overshadowed by its parent LGD, but here is coming out as the number one in group stages. 14 and two, only shedding a handful of matches. Going up against them is a team that has recently had some roster changes and is back in winners. It is TNC. Of course, TNC made an extraordinary run in the lower bracket of last TI, just winning game after game against heavy favorites. And here they are in the winner's bracket going up against LFY. They were in the same group during group stages. So it will be interesting to see how they match up and if 1437 can manage to help swing favor to their side. Getting a chance to catch up with him, we got Casey. The last time you were at TI as a player was TI4, but you've been to several as a coach. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel kind of coming into TI7 knowing that you're back to playing on the main stage? Uh, it's really surprising because uh, just a couple of months ago, I thought that I wouldn't even attempt to play at TI. And uh, just to have this opportunity is a true blessing. I have to ask about what's happened in the last year or so. What brought you to an SCA team as opposed to going back to a Western team? We've had a lot of changes with you since the beginning of the year. Yeah, uh, I was playing on team Cloud9 or NP uh, uh, from the start of the year. Uh, we were all like dedicated to being playing together 
throughout the entire year and you know competing at TI7 together but there were some changes that happened there and I was left without a team and all of a sudden uh, TNC approached me. As far as being a coach versus playing, I mean your resume is incredible. Not a lot of people can say that they've done both or that they've gone to coaching and come back to play. And, and you've done that. You coached Team Secret in 2015. You left coaching to play again. You went back to Team Secret as a coach. And then, as you mentioned, you formed Team NP, which is now Cloud9. What are the things that you love about coaching versus playing? And what are the things that you missed about playing that brought you back? When you're coaching, you are like this outside point of view. You can really see the bigger picture. You can see more strategies, perhaps, because there's less emotions and there's less um, stress about like your own performance involved. Mm -hmm. So when I was coaching, I was learning faster and I was able to teach. In that sense, my Dota knowledge improved much uh, at a much faster rate when I was coaching. But playing is like it's very thrilling. You feel much different. There's a lot more pressure involved and sometimes that can be really fun. Do you think coaching made you a better player? For sure, without a doubt. We touched on it, but I wanna go back to what happened. I mean, you were part of the group that formed NP, which mm -hmm. is now Cloud9. So that means you were really part of it from the ground up. So when you're able to kind of get in on that way to then have to leave the team or decide to leave the team or be forced to leave the team is really, really tough. Yeah. So what, what, what did you go through when that happened? It was a really uh, tough uh, time because we had just finished a tournament. It was a, a DAC. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing well in the groups and then there were some things that went wrong and then we ended up still last place. And then uh, all of a sudden we had a meeting and they're like, oh yeah, you two are removed from the team. And it wasn't really any good explanations or anything like that. It was just like, okay, you're just out. And for me, it was a shock because I don't like to give up uh, with my teammates or anything like that. I always want to figure out how to make it work because I think it's important. Over time, you will create a lot of strategies. And at TI, the most important thing is that your experience throughout the year that you're gonna bring to the event. So after that, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do from there. It was a very tough time for sure. What if you were to face, in a, like it comes down to the wire, it's you versus Cloud9. Okay. How do you, how do you hone in? Like, cause that's gotta bring up a little bit of emotional yeah. competitiveness. Yeah, it will, but at the same time, they I also understand um, them in some ways too because they have uh, like three players that I played with and uh, one of them I've even coached. So I, I understand a little bit about them, whereas for my team, they would only understand how I am. Mm -hmm. So maybe I have uh, a little bit of advantage there at least there, but yeah. It, it'll definitely be an emotional thing to get over, but yeah. we're professionals, so we really need to just understand that and just move on. And will TNC get that opportunity here in this winner's match, best of three? 1437 making the big career move to help support TNC. And on the other side we have from LFY, Casey got the chance to catch up with the captain in flame. First question is very simple one. How did you come to join LFY? 老干爹的经理找到了我，然后，但是他们对少三号位，然后刚好我那段时间想进一步的提升自己吧，就来了。You and Afu came on board in May. How do you think that transformed the team the way that it needed to be heading into Epicenter? 我觉得，如加上我们两个的话会。就我们几个人的性格啊，游戏打法对游戏的理解，然后都会比较的相对的协调吧。就大家都会游戏风格比较类似，然后沟通起来很顺畅。我们平常的平常的交流啊，然后感觉在一起比较放松吧。就大家就
打法风格啊，然后再加上我们个人的选手的习惯啊，会有更多的打法和应对不同的队伍的风格吧。Are there other teams here that you're most looking forward to going up against, or any other teams that you have your eye on? Uh, we in TI should be the most likely to win the Liquid, because before, we were training and competing against them. The chances of winning are pretty low. I want to compete against them. How would that feel to beat them on the TI stage? It would be a pretty exciting thing, because we have won. 其实算输给他们挺多次的了，就不算比赛再训练啊。就我们队是一个比较少有比较少争执的队伍，但是可能每次因为跟他们训练，我们都会有很多的争执。You did an interview with CyberSport and you said that your team plays easily together. Why do you think that is, and why do you think that's been so important in your success? 我带过很多很多的战队，如在 LFI 的话是，我们大家都会比较的。就能沟通嘛？就大家如果有谁犯了错啊，我们会一起讨论啊，怎么样？然后我们大家都会比较虚心的接受队友的建议啊，然后我们大家一起进步，就会不会不会让气氛很尴尬的那种，就是大家觉得一个人很厉害，然后都要听他的。So someone told me that you changed your name in honor of the name of an upcoming book of a Chinese martial arts series. I'm curious about that and whether you draw inspiration from. The entertainment, anime, comics world at all. I think it will. Yeah, just a person's character always has a lot of influence. Just the way you, based on your experience, will influence a lot of things. For example, when I was in the home, I was very straightforward and very easy. My character is quite straightforward. 单纯的就想打多他赢啊，就很很简单。现在会不不给自己太多的压力啊，不想影响自己，然后感觉现在是比较沉稳嘛。Interesting interviews from both of the players, especially like how Inflame talks about trying to improve his mentality as time is going on. Of course, fourteen thirty-seven. Trying to cope with all the shifts. That was that was an impressive interview. I don't know how you guys felt about that, but he seems like a really really bright kid or guy. I don't know how old he is, Just but seems very well spoken. Those very like yeah. very aware of himself and what he's doing here and the opportunities that he has in front of him. Very collected. He seems ah yeah. <laughs> I like this team more and more. Yeah, I'm. I love when he said we're trying or that we're we're able to play easily together because I feel like big moments in Dota are decided. In quarter seconds, half seconds, and the ability for a team to coordinate in that sort of environment is is just remarkable, and it's so important to succeed. So let's get ready for game one between LFY and TNC. LFY versus TNC Pro Team. Game one. And the least surprising bands of the tournament. We got Nyx and Bat Rider out for LFY. We got Lich and Earthshaker out for TNC. Yeah, before we get too far into the draft, I wanted to bring up a little bit about 1437 talked about in his interview. Like, Casey was trying to egg him on about the C9 thing, but they've already placed better than C9, and they're still in the winner's bracket. And he's also had quite an amazing journey. Like these past years, after tier two, we actually went to China to play on yep. a team there. And he's, not, he's not afraid to take charge and yeah. put his fate in his own hands, and it's working out really well for him here. And that together with having the journey with uh, Secret to coach them, I think he learned a lot, and it's really what TNC needed. That was an interesting comment that he made, that he felt like he was able to learn at a faster rate as a coach without the pressure of having to play so much. So, I mean, Bulba talked about that a little bit as well, um, learning from the time he spent coaching on a couple different rosters. It's, uh, you know, when you don't always have the opportunity to play at these major tournaments, but you want to be involved. There's a lot to learn here. I also think that just trying to force yourself to be able to articulate what you think about a certain strategy can often reveal where there's inconsistencies or issues or problems or just highlight what's good about something that someone's already doing. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do exactly that as we get into this draft. Yeah. I saw that uh, Monet had played like almost a different carry every game. 
So that kind of makes sense with uh, th them revolving the draft around Super, that they really want to make sure that Super has a Look at this, Jiro. Look at this Jikiro. First Jikiro, uh, con main stage. Constant flight mode. 1437 hero, Jikiro. He really loves to play that hero. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. I think it, it works well. It gives, you know, it synergizes decently well with Naga sleep. It's good setup here. It gives them, he's one of the supports that gives you some tower push along yeah. with Rasta, and sometimes you can see a support Pugna, which will give you an ability to force towers, force your opponents to fight you, which is exactly what you want to do against Night Stalker. Kind of just want to ball up and take these massive team fights. You were ragging on Kerry Naga yesterday. I think TNC is the only other team that runs it. Yeah. Do you think it's good here? Um, I doubt it. I think they just want to group up and Naga Siren will buy some mana boots, spam on some illusions, maybe get some solid nets, and just be there ready with the sleep, build a mech. Jikiro will probably go for the pipe, and they'll look to end this game decently early or take enough of an advantage to secure a late game win. Nature's Prophet's second pick for LFY. Night Stalker, of course, great at giving vision. Not too impactful in late game team fights. Nature's Prophet kind of has some of the same issues. Great at split pushing, great at summoning six tree ants. Nature's Prophet is a, it's not a hero that's usually picked in the first two, but here they see that they have a Jack Hero, and he's not really good at uh, handling the tree ants and catching the Prophet, so it's a good matchup for him in the lane. Also not good at getting Tower Dove, too. They have definitely have that potential with Nightstalker and Nature's Prophet. And Flame also has one of the strangest hero pools. It's like Elder, Titan, Zeus, Nature's Prophet, the Doom. <laughs> These are the best heroes in the game. But no one else plays them. Yeah, I, I'd be a little careful about saying that Nature's Prophet is, doesn't scale very well. I think he's one of the better late game heroes. He always finds farm and split push. He can split push all over the place uh, very, very easily, either with his Treants, um, you know, teleporting to a lane and summoning those, or just casting his ultimate on the map can uh, help push out the lanes. He also provides your team a decent amount of vision with all the treants that you can you, you can spread them out individually if your micro is good enough point, and yeah. spread them out throughout the map. Also just so fun with early game ganks. And LFY did beautiful things with Nature's Prophet ganks before 15, 20 minutes in group stages. He was one of their linchpin heroes in a variety of matchups to help them close out immediately. It's very easy for him to port in Sprout somebody, secure a kill, summon tree ants, and start pushing that tower immediately. And it uh, really fits well with uh, NS as well, because NS during the night is going to scout, and he's going to find a kill, and then Prophet is going to be there to be able to TP in and uh, help him to get the kill. So we have a Death Prophet and Weaver banned from TNC. I'm not exactly sure what that is telling. Maybe they... Mm, Weaver ban. Huh. Death Prophet makes sense, at least. It's a hero that Super has been playing a lot, and it... It's very good with Prophet for some more tower push. Yeah. But at the same time, they still have the DK, but... Sanking, okay. Probably their offlane hero, I would imagine, unless they do decide to do some sort of core Naga. You know, I'm just noticing that as we've been talking about other teams, we spend a lot of time talking about some of the key star players and building around them, but LFY, you know, continuously it's been about how the team is functioning as a whole, as a unit. Yeah, I think... You look at Monet, who's been playing all the different carries, right? He's yeah. probably the standout player on the team. Super's one of the least flashy mids in this tournament, but he's been getting the job done consistently. Afu's of been pretty flashy, too. He's been consistently really good on the roaming heroes, Shaker or Spirit. Okay, picking up the Dazzle. Uh, I like the Sanking, I think, was kind of set up to lane up against the Nature's Prophet, perhaps. The Caustic Finale will allow Sanking to have a pretty good time in that lane, especially if he buys a poor man's shield to start to help him reduce some of that right-click harass damage that Furion's capable of. Ooh, Razor. And a Razor, wow. They want to be able to fight because they probably understand that LFY really wants to commit to the push here with both Dazzle now and Prophet, so. Yeah, when are the big strengths for Razor? He's usually good against a melee carry that the opponents have because th then he needs to go in, but Razor makes him be like uh, kind of want to go out to uh, drop the static. Like one what of the called? what is it called the uh, static link. Static yeah. link. One of the heroes yeah, okay. that he's best against is like a life steal. Life steal rages and runs in. You just static link and 
life stealer has to. I run think away static or... link is the hardest to break ability in the entire game. I don't even think like it's astral enough, imprisonment so breaks it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, like very very long now. That's a that's this is a weird pick for me. I don't really like this early razor um, without seeing more cores from LFY. I think this like Terrorblade, for example, razor has not a lot of AOE damage. He's gonna have a really tough time dealing with these illusions, and if he decides to run into the middle of a fight and start linking Terrorblade, he's probably just going to get killed. Terrorblade is also just an excellent carry for pushing, and Dazzle has just a great syner or synergy with Terrorblade, yeah. using the Shallow Grave to keep Terrorblade at one health so he can use his health exchange ultimate, Sunder. Absolutely. You're crushing it right now. I know. You said it yesterday, and I'm repeating it now. Yeah, now the Razor seems Day two. I'm the strongest parrot of all time. You're learning. Best parrot NA. All right, let's go. Medusa ban, it's another superhero gone. Let's see, what does Super have left in his pool? DK. DK. Dragonite. Dragonite's still in the pool, huh? I mean, Dragonite... Oh, this is a block pick on Dragonite. That's yeah. what Razor's doing here. Yeah. But they but they can just pick around it, right? I guess sure. they banned out, banned out two of the three, Death Prophet and yeah. Medusa. They don't, have to pick, uh, they don't have to pick DK at all. Could uh, do the Super Pugna. He also played Omni Knight in a game. I think that would be very unlikely, though. Pugna, perhaps... So, I mean, at this point with LFY, we see just a lot of very strong push potential. We see Dazzle there to help enhance the push with the Shallow Grave. Night Stalker, of course, there to get great vision, to get ganks, to set those sort of things up. What is the type of hero that LFY needs? We've talked about some of the specific heroes Super is good on, but what is the team missing? They're lacking team fight, definitely. Night Stalker, Nature's Prophet, Dazzle, and Terrorblade all provide your team very little to none or to no team fight. A lot of single target damage, yeah. Yes, lots of single target damage. TNC's got a bunch of team fight with their first three heroes here. So any kind of five on five clash where they're on equal kind of net worths and experience, I would favor TNC. And they'll be able to set up all these fights too to make sure they always have good fights with the Naga Sleep. It was just fascinating to watch LFY play because in a lot of their compositions, they, they just... There's been a couple times where I wasn't a big fan of LFY's draft, yeah. but they just outskill their opponents so quickly <laughs> it's almost like some of the matchups didn't even matter once you got to the 10 minute mark because they were 5 10k ahead TNC's puck maybe yeah Whew. haven't seen super play this hero too much he's not not really his style puck's a little flashy for super but i'm sure he's capable of it and i it think it's a really great yeah it's a really great pick here that silence is going to be super clutch against all three of these first heroes and he he, he struggles a little bit versus Razor in lane, don't you think, Ben? Yes. But Super has, like, almost always lost his lane this tournament, so mm -hmm. they'll just... I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure Afu on the Night Stalker, when he's roaming around, he'll just ignore mid and be like, Super, you got this, man. You'll figure it out. He Does die. Do any of Puck's abilities break static link? Just if you... Um, Jaunt out. Oh. If you push yourself away with the whatever it's called. John. John. Ethereal Orb in the John. Ethereal Orb, right. But fa uh, Facia does not break. And last pick, Alchemist. All right. Um, definitely could farm a lot of the map, and he can be the frontliner for them. As well. And they have a setup with the sleep if they actually uh, want to like, fight them to set up into the epicenter from Sanky think and uh, Twin. I think LFY can break the jungle, though. That's important against an Alchemist. They have Night Stalker and Furion and Puck to be very mobile on the map, and they can go find this Alchemist and potentially keep him under-farmed. I mean, once again, it may turn out to be a matchup centered around the Alchemist. Can he go off and get to 30k net worth early? Or will LFY be able to push early and shut Alchemist down? It's time to head into game one of series one of day two here at the International. Thank you very much, Day9. And indeed, the first series of Day 2, LFY versus TNC. I'm Odi Pixel. I'm here at Fogged. Fogged, what are we thinking coming into this one? I'm pretty excited. I'm really glad they brought up that point about the invading the jungle, like Peter said. That's the one thing about Alchemist. And LG, LFY, is that's their specialty, as far as I see. They are very about their lanes, and then they kind of crush them, and they invade the enemy jungle, and they pretty much steamroll after that after taking all the early tier ones. So that's what I'm looking at for them to do. Look at Apu playing around in flame in that off lane, because I've seen this Nature's Prophet plus melee. Yes, when they add a I've seen what they do in that, and they dismantle majority of those dueler or tri lanes. So we'll see how they're able to pull it off but I'm pretty excited for this match coming up. Absolutely. Except for the fact that it looks on paper, we look and we see an Alk and a Naga on TNC, and we're like, ew, because, you know, these two heroes sometimes just bring bad taste to the mouth, but 
they've not they've been they've been changed up, and it's of course the support Naga, so it is a different kind of utilization. Yeah, and, and during the draft, when it, I believe it was when the Terra Blade was picked up, you didn't seem too keen on that pick. Oh no, I like the, the I like the Terra Blade. You like I, the Terra Blade. The Razor, when it comes yeah. up, when you don't have a direct counter against it, when you pick it like that, it's like that flex pick. So they were picking it just to dissuade uh, LFY from picking the DK for Super. Just to have, hey, we have a Razor. And then they switch it. They don't actually put the Razor in the mid lane. They put it in the safe lane. So they had that little bit of mind game going for them, which is great. And right off the bat, they actually find themselves a D ward. They're already expecting. They understand how LFY likes to play. They know that they want to block the pull camp. They want to put a lot of pressure onto the enemy safe lane and just constantly run at that. So if they at least are able to alleviate that they can pull, it's extremely important for them to be able to get that experience and maximize. We do see a smoke actually coming out from TMZ. Now we'll see if they get any traction with it. Looks like the line's to be drawn to, to head all the way down bottom and, and look to invade LFY's jungle. They're doing aggro, like Peter was mentioning. They want to have the Sanking versus Nature's Prophet matchup. And it can actually shut down the Terra Blade quite decently. And it's probably pretty unexpected. They scouted out the tri lane top, and then the smoke happens. So it's TNC trying to get that unexpected lane favoring. And is this a lane favoring that's good enough for TNC that LFY may then react to it and switch their lanes back up so they don't find themselves in these, as you say, unfavorable lane matchups? Yeah, probably. It depends on how much they can get the pulls off. That's the one thing is that LFY does have both pulls open if they do want to be able to do that and be able to like, keep the lane back. They just have to not get killed level one and then not get steamrolled. Because if the Tower Blade gets shut down super hard, they have a, weir a very weird way of getting back into the game of actually pushing and sieging. Nature's Prophet can have a pretty good time, but he's versus Sanking, which is an okay matchup as long as Sanking. Oh, looks like Raven got a pretty safe. solid block down on this bottom lane, which is it's going to mean that Monet's rather far bottom. forward. They look to lead in with the Stalic Do they have the control with the slow from 1437. This is looking pretty good. DDC is there. He's yet to skill. Will save the point get for the, the Shadow Grave. Very smartly done there by DDC. Waits until the last possible moment before knowing which skill is required and will save the Terra Blade's life. So Eiffel right away does make the move down bottom and they start already stacking the pole. They know what they need to accomplish in this lane. They need to out-resource them. And once they get a couple levels on their heroes, they're actually extremely strong, especially if like this Jakiro gets out of position. He's very slow, 290 movement speed. It's all up to Tim's pretty much just standing in the front line and zoning them. So, yeah, so if, if they can, uh, also the thing is that they can, they're low on regen is the problem for LFY, but they do have a Dazzle. So as long as they're able to conserve their regen, they can match up decently versus TNC. But TNC does have a lot of regen between their heroes. Right, looking for Tim's here, DDC. Keeping him at bay, Monet and Arthur, as you say, in the neighborhood. Uh, the thing is, as you, you're mentioning, these two side lanes definitely seem to have strength for TNC. But this mid lane, if Cuckoo doesn't get any help, this, this could become a bit tricky, couldn't, for, couldn't it, for him in this 1v1 against the Puck? Definitely. Puck is oh. able to heavily harass this bottom. That thought, though, because bottom lane, DDC's gone on by TNC, and they'll pick up the first blood just like that. As Arthur soon as and Monet Tim's, unable to do anything. Tim's gets level two, the net comes out. Easy grab on anybody who's on the side. That's the important thing when you're playing versus these tri versus tri lanes. You have to watch your positioning of staying in the lane. If you're going to do pulls, that's okay as long as you have somebody kind of guarding you for the pull. But for the most part, you can't get caught on the side there because it's just free easy picks. And see as well, this mid lane CS looking very good at the moment. Super cool. Super. Super. He is going to jump forward for this, puts the point into the waning rift. It's not going to be quite enough burst. In fact, that's it's spray. Turn around, man, it up a super. Oh, no. Oh, no. Super. Maybe should have stuck to playing Dragon Knight, but that is not how you want to start that mid lane matchup. There's a TP coming they, from They're going to try to find though. something in return, indeed. They are looking for Cuckoo. He's got that poor man's shield. We'll see if it's going to be enough. He does need the proxy. The Courier's to coming. We've got a salve on it. Oh, salve's up. He's going to keep himself alive. Goes for the deny. Cuckoo is loving the mid lane. He is smiling all over. And in fact, bottom lane, some positive action as well for TNC. They're moving in onto Monet. Does have the backup from DDC. That will be enough to hold TNC back. TNC here, off to quite a start, making a big impact here on the main stage. One thing is, though, he does get the self-delivered. He uses it, though, and then dies. And dying to ancients, dying to neutrals, you're dead for 24 seconds as a mid laner. That's actually pretty devastating. Because now Super pulls way ahead in the last hits and is actually acquiring more net worth. So you don't want to give the kill, but at the same time, it hurts a lot to die to neutrals like that this early on as a mid laner. He's back now, though. Yeah. And he's going to continue that acid spray spam. Absolutely. Yeah, this is the thing. Yeah, Super CS still off the charge. You know, he's farming like an absolute beast. 21 11. So, despite that death, Super definitely still maintaining the lead here in this mid matchup. 
Afu probably wants to get a couple more levels before he makes that move. It's also going to be nighttime soon. I think he wants ideally level 3 so he can decide if he can save a point in Crippling Fear. can be very useful to kill the Sand King and the Alchemist early on. And they're actually just switching lanes. They decide. Yeah. This aggro Trident is too much. They need their Terra Blade to have something and yeah, put him top. Not the greatest matchup though versus a Sand King who's True. already level 4. But there's no Caustic actually skilled on Sam H, which is a bit surprising versus uh, the Nature's Prophet trains. But Inflame is one of the best at playing Nature's Prophet in the laning phase, so if you understood why he was dissuaded from doing that. Cuckoo now, yeah, just goes to the jungle. It's too much threat. Once Puck gets like level four or five, there's too much damage coming out and too much threat of the Nature's Prophet TPing behind you. So he just has to resort to that. It's bottom lane, Inflame. Does have the phase boost, giving Raven quite a bit of a punch. Afu looking for the chase down. Raven quick to cut himself out of the sprout. Will be fine now. The reaction from TNC. 1437's there as well as teams from the Invis. Jumps forward He's with the Rig turn, with the static link. From TNC, they're looking for Afu. There's no DDC in the neighborhood, so there's no save for the Night Stalker. And a third kill is picked up by TNC. Very strong aggro, Charlie. So much slow and control, and the damage comes off from that Razor, who already has phase boots. So they have the chase as well now. And this is where Afu maybe wants to make moves elsewhere. As she smokes up, starting to commit maybe toward that mid lane, it looks like. He puts a ward to watch the movements of where the Naga's going. Yeah, Cuckoo's very, yeah, Cuckoo's very low. very susceptible to death here. The Only one coming out, left. But they can certainly look to die for this, and indeed they will. He has the infused raindrop. It's not enough to save him. LFY. Quick oh, they, the for the they may just get this as well. I'm going to look to try and duke it across the tree line, but Afu with a flying vision gives it to Super. So Super has that vision to make the connection. Damn, I didn't think that they were actually going to commit so hard for the courier, but with the Hunter in the Night making yeah. it so much easier to, be able to see it, even though it is sprinted up. Still definitely the biggest issue for LFY being that Monet's start has not been great at all because of this aggression from TNC. Still lacking behind in CS. Levels as well. One, They're not four, quite three, seven, there. Top, though. And now they look for die. fight. Yeah, with the Metamorphosis and the Poison Touch connecting, they'll go and they'll take one. Sam H tries to hold them back with the Burrow Strike and the Sandstorm. Not enough to get a kill in return, but we'll push them back. But still, this is perfect. You know, LFY, they need to find Monet involved in as much action as they can to kind of bring him back from this very, very slow early five minutes from LFY. It's a catapult wave right now, too. Bottom lane, in flame, getting committed on. Should be just fine. Get the TP out after the net. So catapult waves coming in. Metamorphosis was used, but Sam H is able to just sandstorm and push out top. Bottom lane, maybe TNC is able to put some tower pressure here could be very nice for them being able to. Both teams, they want to be able to get those early tier ones to get the access points into jungle versus this Alchemist and Terror Blade. Those invasions are super important versus those two heroes in particular. Mid lane, 1437 takes yep. a step too far up. Right away with the Dream Core down, Afu and Super going to work, bringing down and up. I mean, yeah, Super, you know, as much as we made Joe, he is doing amazing. Is it 42 CS, her highest farm on the board? He is definitely going to be the real threat. If they can start to utilize this bug, getting mo moving around, use the Dream Coil to enable Monet to do work in the fights with the Metamorphosis, it's going to get crazy. And in fact, already 1437 getting jumped on again. The Nature's Wrap flies through. And LFY, they pick up another kill in the mid lane. But Super now getting caught out of the side. Actually, Chaunts on the high ground into a trap. He's, he's going to get his orb out. Down to the low ground. Raven's going to see if he can try and chase him. Cuckoo is there with the wraparound. Will block him off. And look, he's trying to. Oh, you know, I'm always going to kill, give the kill to Raven. But he says, I'll take him myself. And does beat down upon Super, so they will catch him at the same time. Monet and DDC looking towards Sam H. He's got the stick charges, does have the burrow strike. They were thinking about bringing in Inflame as well, but as he's soon as those charges came out, they knew they couldn't go for it. It's very high level. Yeah. Level 7 already. Lots of. He's 7.4 HP per second as well. Hard kill to get that max Sandstorm too. But they also almost claim mid tower, so there's a little bit of a change up that we usually see from LFY. They're playing a lot around Super, which they have to do right now because the other lane, the other lane got shut down so hard. It's pretty much up to Super and Inflame to get Monet back into this one. Yes, they've got to somehow enable the, the recovery for Google this mid. Every time coils Again. up. Super being so proactive with the help of Afu and Inflame, just jumping in, joining him, and there's nowhere to roam with these trits in the way. They will have the Sand King TPing in. Sam H may find Afu in return with the Sandstorm because of his skill build. Does, it's doing a lot of damage at this stage of the game. Takes down one in return, but still, nonetheless, it is this Alchemist now getting heavily punished by LFY. This pressure in the mid lanes giving space to Monet up on top. Sam H, another kill. He's going to get oh, maybe oh, so close. That silence saving the life of both of them. Super. Does have the Invis was thinking about going back in there, but as you say, this level 8 Sand King, very, very scary for LFY. LFY is making a lot of space around the map, though. They're forcing aggression, they're forcing rotations, which gives Monet a lot of space. Up top, wailing on that top tier 1 tower. TNC also trading bottom. 
So they are, they're, you know, they're, like, they, like we said, they need to have some way to kind of get Mone back in the game. And there's two ways of doing that. You either get him involved in fights and you play around him, or you make space elsewhere on the map. And right now, he's still a bit too underleveled to play around him. Sam H back up top, and Dimone is backed up by DDC at the moment. So we'll be fine. Looks like Super as well. Did pick, obviously, the, the Nob Tallies up for the lane, but not going for the Veil. Maybe saving straight for that Blink Dagger this game. Top lane, Sam H coming in with the Burrow Strike. Mone is there, looking for the turnaround. In Flame comes in with the TP. No Burrow Strike for Sam H for five seconds. We'll try Locks and get out. But again, yeah, these Trian blocks causing a huge issue for Sam H. He does have the Stick Charge. We'll let the Burrow Strike back up. That's and that's enough. He's out of there. Sam with the plays. Bottom lane, Raven diving in deep. He steals a hefty chunk of damage from Arfu. Arfu will get himself back to safety. Raven might be in some trouble here. Super's got Coil. Got him isolated, he's, but... He's a little scared, though, of Raven having that stolen damage. Yeah, don't think they have TP follow-up. I think Inflamous is still on cooldown for 10 more seconds. Five for five. Very close showing for both of these teams in the early 10 minutes. TNC with the slight edge, but as expected, with having the Alchemist on their side. Yeah. And running a very unexpected aggro tri lane, which worked incredibly well. So... Look, something I always like talking about is the levels. Of course, Radiance after aggro tri lanes, we take a look, and it's pretty well dis dispersed. The four and five on the uh, Naga and Jakiro, and four and six actually on LFY. So Apu is level six on Night Stalker, almost level seven actually. But now they're looking to try to make aggression on him bottom, diving the tier two. Yeah, they're ready to go. Out comes the root. 1437, following through with the slow. There will be TP reactions from LFY. They turn towards Tim's. Will get taken down here by Inflame on the back lines. LFY, maybe see if they can chase down for more. Raven has the ultimate really out. Really wants to try here. He does have that dream coil if he can close the gap. They're really fa the Night Stalker is very fast with those phase boots. They might be able to catch up to him eventually. They do see him going into the tree line as well. They should be able very to hard for Raven. to get out. Yeah, they've got the vision. Dream coils down. He will break the coil on an attempt to escape. 4037 is there with the slows. Does still have the ultimate up for a couple of seconds there, Raven. And backup is on its uh -oh. way. LFY may now be turned around upon. Joe Four from Super does get the two man silence, trying to bring down the Sand King. But Sam H still gets the time for the Burrow Strike. The Graves there from DDC though. Super survives. Sam H down. Raven will chase down. Super goes for the jump and gets it. Super's out of there. That grief. Perfect DDC. timing by DDC. I mean, we saw it time and time again in the group stages. Arfu as well with the Duke and TPI and the tree line gets himself back to safety. And again, they force a ton of reaction toward the bottom lane, which frees up a lot for Monet to get that farm. Still not really completely recovered yet. They don't kill the Razor. They get a Sanking, though, at least, and lose nobody. Yeah. It was actually Afu was holding the Void there because he didn't want the Razor to just TP out right after the call okay. and use the Void. So it actually ends up getting a lot closer to their tower, but he had to do so. And it's really important that they're carrying Reveal on the Night Stalker and the Dazzle, because in that situation, he puts down the Sentry instantly as soon as he sees Sanking. Sanking goes into the Sandstorm, but yeah, they clean him up. DDC's Dazzle, definitely something the TNC. They've got to be aware of it in these fights. Somehow they have to stop this man from getting in position for these Graves and such. Because as we've seen, it's, it's impossible for TNC to find the trades when DDC is in the neighborhood. And already LFY now off the back of that favorable trade down bottom, immediately moving to the top lane. Yeah. Sam H in the neighborhood, 1400 towards the Blink Dagger at the moment, and Super still under the cover of the smoke. Will look towards him. Oh, Sam H. A little late with the Dream Core there. Sam H with the game sense. Bro is striking straight away up to the tier one. And that, by the looks of it, is going to put off LFY from looking for anything more there. So nice, nice awareness there from Sam. You know, we're talking about the Monet start beginning to recover, slowly but surely, of course. But this Alchemist, almost level 12, actually level 12 now. Look and at the Arlen money. Almost getting online for Radiance. So they, they, they've come back, they are hunting for Sam H, but again, using these Burrow Strikes to just create the distance between them. And it makes it very hard for LFY to get anything done. And indeed, with this time, as you say, Cuckoo closing in on the, the Relic. Bottom lane, TNC getting some pressure on a tier 2. LFY, they really want to catch this Sam H, but again, he just Burrow Strikes away. Arfu will look to try and chase him down by the looks of it. They are teeping in to block him off as well. In flames there, and this time they will finally bring him down. But essentially, that is Sam H creating a lot of space. Bottom lane, tier two, down to less than half health. And what's the money looking like on Cuckoo? He's a hundred so away from much. the relic. Yeah. And they're gonna get this tier two by looks with down bottom. So Elfwise trying to punish as much as they can, because they're like, oh, Alchemist is just farming this whole time. We have to make as much happen with these R4, R4, 4v4. Four, four but at the same time, TNC is getting some very favorable trades coming out here. Absolutely. Now they have a lot of access points into the enemy jungle. They put some very nice aggressive wards down too. So they're able to watch whenever, wherever Monet is farming. Monet actually able to start cleaning up an ancient stack, which is gonna really start accelerating him. 
Yeah, there's only a few hundred now behind Raven. GNC's carry, so that laning stage starting to its effects at least being reverted, but definitely overall the fact that Cuckoo and his alchemist exactly where he would hope to be at this stage. Yeah, 1437 is playing the Jakiro as he normally does. He just throws down his macro pyre on a wave, just pushes it out as much as possible, meets up with his team, throws some liquid fire. Doesn't really care if he gets killed in a lot of those situations because he's doing his job. He's just making sure that the lanes are forced out and it's really hard for LFY to do those invasions. We t they talked about it on the panel that LFY has a good team to actually be able to invade, but not when these kind of situations happen. And Ra Radiance is going to be online in 150 gold, so he pretty much has it. So I'd like to see TNC definitely smoke up as soon as that Radiant Radiance gets online so them to just make plays around the Alchemist because it's pretty hard to bring him down at this point. And I guess that's that's the thing as well. Once this this Alchemist gets his Radiance Manta Octarine, and there's not too many great ways for Elephant to deal with sort sort of that Radiance Illusion push, is it? Not really, no. They need their Tower Blade to be big to deal yeah. with that. Or the Nature's Prophet, of course. True. Is, who is farming very well. Down bottom. Well, the real super, but he will be able to jump out, of course. Same time, Cuckoo being backed up by 1437. There is the Radiance now completed. Top lane, Monate out into the trees, TPing himself away. Mid lane, Arfu making a bit of a go here onto Cuckoo. And uh, it's got the silence low. Rage, the Armlet's still there, though. And of course, with Armlet toggling at his capability, there's no chance that Arfu can dive us low. Definitely 15 minutes in, TNC. Turning up here on the main stage against LFY, this this absolutely terrifying team in the group stages. They've got Blink now on Sanking. Hood already picked up on the Razor. They are looking at LFY's lineup and they're like, yeah, they're majority magic damage until the Terror Blade and Nature's Prophet get a couple items. So it's good itemization by Raven. Yeah, look at the D ward here, TNC. Unblocking their camps. LFY's warding, and LFY though, they know that 1437 was there with the D-Wall from the low ground, will find him in the tree line. Bring down the Chikira. It's about to happen at some point, when they're splitting up so much on the map. Like, Razor's showing bottom, Sanking's showing top, Alchemist is still jungling. They're not 100% aware that the Alchemist is jungling, but they probably have good, good reason to believe so. So every time they see someone else, like, if they show, if, that's like one of the big rules of Dota. If you show in all three lanes, one of you is bound to die. Raven, the BFI is okay, it's feeling safe. The static then will be broken straight away. But nonetheless, enough to stop LFY chasing him down. No TP, TP cooldown was still there for uh, Inflame. If, it was, if the nighttime was still lasting maybe a bit longer, or if they had that TP cooldown with Darkness, they maybe could have committed for it, but they wanted to just relax since that was not up just yet. Same age, continuing that pressure top. Oh, cool, some TP stop. reactions, but he's straight up with a blink into the trees and nothing there to hold him back. They're just shoving lanes in constantly. TNC, th the Sam H has literally just been parked top, sent, sent, uh, sent King Stun into Sandstorm over and over again to force the lane out. I mean, he's just making so much space across this map. And DDC, chased down by Raven. Mona is there. We'll pop the Metamorphosis for this one, but immediately just held back. Arfu's going to try strong. and chase down Raven, see if they can get this Razor kill. But Samich is there on the high ground, does have Epi and Blink if he wants to try and turn back into this. Dream Cold's dropped down only onto Raven. He gets Sam silenced right away. Nicely done there from Arfu, making sure that there's no return play coming in from Samage. They've also managed to sprout Tims up on the sideline. He does still have the song. Not gonna bother popping it by the looks of it. As he accepts his fate, that is the Naga Siren down. Did now TP was still on cooldown for the Naga, so even with the song usage, was almost certainly dead anyway. So deciding to save it per for potentially another hold here back at the base. LFY forced him to split in two different ways. So Naga got isolated a bit by the Dazzle who threw Weave on him, and Nature's Prophet just chasing him down, right clicking, while the Night Stalker and everyone else chased through the through the river. So it's just really good play by LFY, but also TNC maybe slight misplay, just running in different directions and splitting up rather than running against a group. But during all that time, Cuckoo just farming, gets the boots of travel finished up. So he's got uh, ways to be able to join the fight with his teammates. That fight, and they will. TNC smoking up. Totally unbeknownst to the side of LFY. No vision down at that area. So TNC do have a chance to make a jump here. They're really relying on the Alchemist farm though at this point. It's 3k lead and the Alchemist is the one who has the 6k lead over the next hero. So the next three are LFYs. I mean they see DDC mid. It's obviously not the biggest kill they want. But uh, it is a kill nonetheless. He'll make sure to waste their time with the Grave. He's going to look to see if he can get the timing with a deny. It was just, just a little bit too early, though. The Grave was still up. In fact, TNC said, all right, we'll turn this into a Roche attempt. Straight away, they're into the pit. I mean, LFY are probably going to be aware that this is happening. 
They've got a pretty decent Roche lineup. They don't really take too much damage because of the Chemical Rage and Liquid Fire, so the Roche doesn't really attack and they have yeah. to sustain through it. I mean, this is this is going to work out perfectly if TNC just get away with that. DDC sort of making the call for TNC there. They come and take Roche. They say, well, we will. We will. And LFY, they're not even going to try and challenge it. Free Roche down there for TNC. Aegis into Cuckoo's pocket. How convenient. Excellent call there by TNC, though, yeah. to make their way in with that stolen damage. And they do have a decent amount of minus armor, like we said. Acid spray with Riptide. Let's rush down quite a lot. Still Monet on the farm. How's he doing item wise? He's on his way toward Manta. Nearly at the ultimate orb. Yeah, still. Very the road much to recovery is still there. Yes. As we said, you know, at the start where he was very much behind. In a much better position now. Decent levels as well, level 12. Gets an arcane rune, that helps a lot. More conjure images. TNC has some very deep wards to watch wherever that alchemist, or to watch wherever that terror blade is farming. No time to be popped, Raven. Just a few hundred away from having the blade mail on the razor. And still certainly all the space in the world for Cuckoo's alchemist. Yep, it's it's just Cuckoo really farming though. That's the one concern I do have for TNC is that no one else is really able to get the farming. We go they, they are trying to fight here around the shrine and they're not going to get away with it. But the fifth damage comes to the midst of it all. Get the two man bro strike. Graves out of time. Yep. DDC, but it did the MP chase down coming through, forcing the side of LFY back. DDC has already put the grave. The Dream Call Stone will hold the back. Silence onto Samage to make sure he can't burrow strike forward. Nobody died. That could have got a lot messier for LFY there, trying to fight around that shrine, but it didn't. They all survived. DDC again with a very nice grave. He's been on point with those. I actually cannot believe that nobody died there. TNC had to expend a couple ultimates there to, de to defend that. Now Elfy able to siege a bit toward that tower, but TNC's all in the area. They still have sleep too, and like the panel mentioned, they do have a decent combo with the Jakiro and the Sanking on top of that sleep. See so if they can do anything off the back of this. They are going to jump forward with the Burrow Strike onto Mane. Still on the sidelines though, Arfu's still by the shrine, looking to see if he can get behind them for a clutch silence. Cuckoo will have his eyes upon him. Cuckoo He's not going to look for the chase though, Arfu, too speedy. Cuckoo just farmed a massive ancient stack. About to have Manta style already finished up now too. Double the net worth of the next hero. Alchemist. He's going to try something here with his haste rune. Looks to see if he can get a bit of a cheeky play onto Super. Super jumps back, will jaunt off. Phase shifts there. Dodge the concoction. He's got to use it now. Raven. Into Wars DDC has got Sam H in the neighborhood. See if they can get anything done. 1437 around as well. The wards of this game have been crazy by TNC. It all their I'm pretty sure every single ward they've placed has been put in the enemy jungle. Or watching that one ancient spot, the one on the left side. But other than that, yeah, they've been completely focused on sticking on LFY's side of the map. Other than Cuckoo. Cuckoo's just chilling in the jungle. And Flame keeping up the split push pressure as well. Shadow Blade complete, so he's going to feel a lot safer doing so now. And uh, definitely something that TNC had to be aware of. But of course, yeah, with, with the Naga, with the, the Alchemist, they themselves, very good methods of pushing out the lanes. I mean, you mentioned that Jakiro saying it, and that their whole team as a whole, a lot better at sort of bursting down the waves in comparison to LFY's lineup when it comes to waves pushing. Yeah, definitely. They have the Nature's Prophet, though, which is a, he's, he's a little bit of a different creature. Oh, they can go everywhere. Mid lane, quick jump in. On to 1437 with the Veil, of course. Massive amounts of magical damage from LFY. They did see a couple people bottom, or they saw at least one hero bottom with LFY. Now they're starting to pincer, looking for a couple kills. They poured in. There's actually no reveal on the side of TNC except for that one sentry ward they have in the middle of the jungle. And in fact, LFY may be wanting to try and fight this. Alfu comes in immediately with the silence onto Sam H. Hulk from a Raven comes through. They'll start to force back here onto Inflame. They have the root as well. He goes for the TP out. Graves there to make sure he's safe. But no, the Pro Strike comes in from Sam H. He's going to be left behind. Inflame's down. They do lose Sam H in return. But TNC, seeing what they get, so we more Cuckoo comes in with the boss with the pre prepared concoction. And that will set up for a second there for TNC. Nice response. The beauty of having Boots to travel on Alchemist at an early time. You can always join the fights and outnumber. Alphi probably thought that they could outnumber them there, but to, and now they go high. They are going They've got the Aegis. They've got the Manta, the Radiance, and as you say, the Aegis on this Alchemist. Cuckoo feeling ready to frontline. They are without Sam H, but LFY themselves, no DDC, no Inflame. Getting very close to bringing down this tier three. The fortification comes out from LFY. They do have 
No, they don't quite have Dream Crawler yet. How long until we're seeing that one? Two up? seconds. St uh, two seconds. Yeah. So they've got it now. Now TNC realize they start to back off. They're a little scared of this. There's the, the Dream song, though. The three, indeed, the song coming through. Buying time for Cuckoo, at least, to TP out. Tim's TPing out as well. 40 37. Looks like he will be the one to be left behind. Raven trying to get Raven as well. Make it. Wasn't quite quick enough with it. Now with the Void Stone coming out from Arfu. Raven, he will be taken down. So LFY able to punish TNC off the back of that push down bottom, taking two, and TNC as you know they did get a lot of damage to the tier three tower, but they didn't quite finish it off. Could be could be worse though. They weren't able to get the song off at that time. If he got silenced somehow, it could have been four or five heroes dropping. So losing two, not the greatest, but can definitely be more costly. And they got yeah, like you said, majority of that tower brought down. Aggressive TP in. They're yeah, looking for Tim's as well. Coming in, Arfu with the setup sprouts out with the silence. And of course, Song still on cooldown. No chance for Tim's LFY. Quick with the plays, knowing that there's already a couple of heroes off the map, and straight down the bottom lane. Monet with the last of his metamorphosis, putting pressure onto this tier one. They've got the full five man around here for LFY. This is a very, very risky tower for TNC to try and hold, and indeed they they won't even give it the time of day. They'll let it go as LFY playing the tower. We mentioned how much these two guys do. In Flame and Afu on LFY are having incredibly good games. 5-2-11. Yeah. and two and 11. He's involved in all 16 kills on Afu. That's absolutely incredible. And 4-1-5, and one and five, of course, have been in flame. Very impressive for what he's been doing, but still, Afu is absolutely everywhere, involved in everything that they've done so far. Cuckoo's deep, though. He's in LFY territory. Afu is actually gonna kind of let him go there. Did spot him out. Now we'll go in on him with Mone. And they were, no, Afu's not bothering to throw anything down on him. I, don't know, I guess he knows there's the Manta there, and so it just feels like he can't do anything about that Alchemist. Just has to sort of let Luke Cuckoo be and get on with his life. <laughs> That's just the, the fear factor of the Alchemist. They need, they need the, they need the puck pretty much because he's their only real lockdown. As the panel kind of talked about, their chase is good because they have the Night Stalker, but their actual way of like keeping the fights near them is just the puck. They don't have any other stuns besides puck. Google will be getting that Octarine at a good timing, 25 or 20, 26 soon. minute mark. So, like we said, double the net worth of the next ones. But other than that, it's still you take a look, and it's only a 2k lead. For, at, for TNC, and it's actually a 1,000 experience lead going the LFL, way of LFY. It's, yeah, as you say, you know, just looking at the three cores from LFY. Across the board in comparison to Raven and Sam H, LFY are breaking ahead. This Midas on Inflame, certainly working out, and uh, as you said, you know, the amount of split push pressure he's been putting on. Farming these waves, keeping them pushed out. And the really impressive thing, too, is that Monet, he's zero and zero. Has not died yet, even though he got aggro tri lane, has been doing a great job of just recovering. His team is making all the space in the world for him to do that, which he desperately needs. He's now got Manta style though, so he's a lot more threatening. We're gonna see a smoke on smoke here coming through from both sides. TNC coming down the river, and left entering from the bottom. It looks like here. They are gonna look to jump onto Cuckoo. Cuckoo get the chemical rage out, they'll jump, they'll drop the dream core. Nature Rapids well, has the man style. Now the back of a TNC coming in Samurai. Looking for the epicenter there, he gets it, comes in, only catches the Night Stalker. They're though. sleeping though. And in fact, yeah. The sleep epicenter, they, they sort of said we can't get we can't fight. We've got to get out for now. LFY, they are gonna certainly chase this down. They look towards Tim's, jumping forward with the silence. Sam H still down the high ground. They have got the concoction built up by Cuckoo, tries to throw it out, but super easy phase shift there for the puck. Will be fine. LFY continuing to chase up the high ground. Ice path holds back the Night Stalker Raven with the ultimate still and the blade mail returning a lot of damage. Super still trying to jump back in with the silence. Looking for Sam H. Can he quite find it? No, Sam H still alive. In flames gonna TP onto the side. Looking for him with the sandstorms there. Sam H keeps himself alive. Not only the Jakira to have died yet, but TNC, they're falling very low. Sam H again with the bow strike, trying to break the distance, but super jumps forward. We'll finish off Sam H. Tim's holding down the puck underneath the range of the tower. The buyback, but still though. super too tanky, has the phase shift. Sandstorm's there, but he's, oh, he's going to be used up. Can he get himself out of this one? No, the blink's not going to be there in time. Will face shift dodge the burrow strike? Can he really play himself out? Had to off the blink. There's illusions upon him. Sandstorm as well, trying to hold this man back. Tim's looking to try and get the net out. Cuckoo's there with the cut off, and he cannot escape that. Super finally goes down as TNC will take the puck. What a crazy fight. They actually force Sam H to buy back there, but the whole time that they have Metamorphosis, they just want to go, go, go. They don't want to not fight. As soon as Meta wears off, that's when they instantly start to retreat. Absolutely, and it's instantly when TNC say, let's get down this middle lane. No Metamorphosis. Yep. Pucks down for 30 seconds. They want to try and abuse this, this opening as much as they can. Into the tier two they go. Can they break the high ground though? We saw them try it down on the bottom lane. 
I think they're going to go down bottom, it looks like. I see the line drawn by 1437. They have a creep wave coming in mid, so they're actually able to go for that tower. There's still Glyph up, and now they're all aggressively weaved. This Armor is, is starting to take it down. This could be risky. Ten, 12 seconds till Pug's back. Fortifications there. TNC have to be very careful about how they go about this bottom lane push. Courier snipe coming out. Easy for Inflame. And yeah, TNC, they back off from that bottom lane. As soon as the Pug's back up, they realize they cannot afford to overstay their welcome like the last time they did down there. They get a nice uh, deep ward in the base, though, and I don't think LFY is going to know that that's there. Because usually you, th you expect it when someone commits more to a push, but in that one, that's, that's, a, that's just a really sneaky ward coming out from 1437. Bottom lane, 1437, out alone again. We'll try for the TP out, but the damage is more than enough from LFY. I like the I like this by Super too. This he didn't use it in this situation, but now he has the boots of travel finished up on the puck. So he can always TP to inflame Treants and always get involved in all the fights. They're gonna look for Roshan as well. With one man down, they know that they've got the numbers advantage for 20 seconds and LFY. Solar press too, yeah, they should be able to bring it down at a decent pace. This is the important one too. This is the Aegis and yeah. cheese. Song is available, Epi is available as well, but without that Jakiro... This is going to be such a terrifying push as well. You know, Monet has Metamorphosis back up and available. That with Aegis and Gs. They have a very strong possibility of being able to break the high ground of TNC, and TNC indeed, they are nowhere near this. They'll start to send some Naga illusions out, but it's going to scout it out too late as LFY do get themselves Roshan, Aegis and Cheese. TNC probably doesn't want to take straight up fights now versus that. Trying to split push. They've got the, the means to do so though with the Alchemist, of course. And Cuckoo's about to have Shivas, which is a huge pickup. That one item actually makes Alchemist insane. Just the, the amount of uh, it increases your tankiness is massive because that armor and as well as the slow and attack speed slow can be they, quite they, crucial on Monet. They pretty much have to focus everyone on that out to, yeah. to have a chance of killing him. Or somehow get like a silence off before he's able to like after the mantle oh, now yeah. comes off so sure. he can't get the chemical rage but it's still super hard to bring him down they have to isolate him or get a heavy weave ticking down from one to ice to uh just find a place bottom lane segregated. again yeah anyone that comes down here will be hunted down afu closes the gap has the cryptic fear trying to go for the tp straight out in the sideline oh, but coil though. yeah coils down and that will be another pick up for lfy down in this bottom lane i mean both afu and in flame just so scary to push out in a game where these two are playing this night stalker nature's profit is Time and time again, they are catching out these solo lane pushes. And for the first time in the entire game in 30 minutes, it was a 100 gold lead for LFY, but now it's gone back for TNC. <laughs> Cuckoo back on with the farm train. As soon as that Shivas is done, he's up to 2k on top of it. Arfu eyes towards the middle lane. Down bottom as well, 1437. They're starting to get a lot of their itemization coming out, though. Monet has completely recovered, yeah, as we see, that 13,000 net worth. But now, with the Manti style, which is the super core arm, but Hurricane Pike, now he has that tool to actually push himself away from that Razor to not have to worry so much about that static link. Oh, Raven is talking about the Razor. He's been spotted down the tree line. He needs to back up a super jumps in. Beautiful silence on the back lines. Make sure that there's no response immediately. The stun does still come out from Cuckoo. But TNC keeping their distance, not wanting to take the fight against LFY, whilst they do not have good vision around that area. That's why I will back off. TNC do hold this tier two for the time being in the middle lane. But again, I mean, you talked about it in the draft. These puck silences have the potential to be so clutch in these team fights. Yeah. Every time the super's in position, it's 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 pretty much impossible for TNC's backliners to react as quick as the rest of the team need them to do so. Afu on the side. Gets spotted out and will immediately go for the TP back to base. Could mid lane, TNC. They really want it. They're immediately coming down this. Uh, again. Cliff is still cool down yeah. for one more minute. So they want to try to force something. To, to it's every time that that metamorphosis that is has out. been used. Yep, exactly. Every time that they know that's not there, TNC know that they have this, this nice little advantage. They have to. Like They are actually starting to be in a point where it's just the Alchemist who actually does much in the fights. Everybody else is, I mean, Razor's 11k net worth. Sand King has dropped down to all the way 7,000 net worth. So not really having the impact that you would want from your, your core sanking. But that's you know, the nature of their draft. It's the Alchemist, the Alchemist versus the world. And LFY is slowly but surely getting means to be able to deal with it. TNC though, still playing it safe. Take the tier three. Don't stick around for more. Back off, clean up the shrines. And there definitely is still some sort of solace and safety knowing how farmed Cuckoo is. You, you yes. constantly got this Alchemist, which is getting to the point where he's sort of borderline unkillable. And he can give Axe to every single one of their heroes. Absolutely. Which will yes, be that's super true. helpful. Who's getting it first? Probably, I would say probably the Raven. Uh, Raven. 
just because of he's under farm. Sanking is probably like one of the best ones because of the, the stun, how massive the range is for him to catch and everything. But I think just because Raven, his farm has completely stagnated, you have to give him a way to accelerate. Yeah, let's see if that is next on the shopping list. Is it certainly is getting close to the point where Cuckoo can look to, to buff up his teammates. Has 5,000 gold in the bank at the moment. Like all the eggs are... All the eggs are pretty cool. Like the Jakiro is probably the most underwhelming. It's great for high ground defense. What about the, 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 the Nagarax fault? How many the times heal? have you seen that? I've, it's no, I think I've seen heal? it, what, twice ever in competitive Dota or something? Maybe less? It's very rare. I mean, I know it's been picked up, but you don't see it often at all. I think, what, full duration ends up healing like 56% of everyone's HP or something? It's, it's, it's a, a lot. lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. 70. 70. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. That, that can be... That can absolutely turn a fight if they get the clutch moment to use it. Especially with an alchemist, right? You full heal him, and then he pops chemical rage again, and then you're like, uh oh. <laughs> but for the time being, Cuckoo, focusing on the necessities for the team, does pick up the gem for the side. Super finished up the Agonims. That's also the thing is, we were talking about yeah. the alchemist being able to pull Ags, but Puck, when he gets level 20, 25, can pull the moon shards, and that 420 GPM starts to become pretty absurd for himself. So he actually chooses the... Um, Minus three second waning, three uh, seconds on waning rift. You okay. see a lot of players go for the spell lamp because you get level twenty five, you get your dagon fast, and eventually you'll be able to just burst people down like that. But the waning rift, like we said, it's been super relevant in this game and can prove That's to be prove massive. to do so. I mean, what, what, what's the kind of the timings then? What on a ten second cooldown? It's like the same cooldown as your orb. Yeah. Like that's the you know you orb in, you're able to get silence off pretty much every single time because they're you know eleven on the orb and ten on that. Aya Scotty, next on the menu for Monet. Now level 18 for that low cooldown Sunder. And I, I think definitely to kind of harp on, on on what you've been mentioning, the thing to know about this game is the fact that LFY are only 1,000 behind when TNC have a, an Alchemist with 31k net worth at 35 minutes. It just goes to show how kind of well-rounded and farmed up the remaining members of LFY are in comparison to that of TNC. They, the rest of TNC other than this out are really, really falling behind. Yeah. They're having to kind of run around because they're afraid of the pickoffs. That's what was happening in the, like, the mid game. Like 10 minutes ago or so, people were showing bottom. They kept getting killed over and over again. So they're at a point where they're like, okay, we kind of have to stick together because this, this Nature's Prophet and Night Stalker are putting too much pressure on us and it's causing them to get very under farm. It's just cuckoo. Now it's up to 6,500 gold. I mean, he's got enough to pick up a scepter and have the buyback. See what, Indeed, you, what he, he wants to do. If he wants to maybe finish up the armlet for himself and buy like an AC instead of getting the Aghanims sure. for his teammates Swap first. Sure, something for that. Could be a possibility. Look at the Halberd now on Raven. So a bit of an answer to the main man, Monet, when the TV turns up to the fight. Hey, he's, he's picked up a couple items. The Hurricane Pike, Halberd, and Blade Mail. Hood. Now that there's a, a blood the fourth thorn though on, on yep. inflame, definitely that sort of same thing applies as you said earlier. If they can get that silence onto the out post Manta Star, then they've got the potential to, to even bring him down. It's a lot of damage yeah. if they have that on him and three, the whole team focusing it. Three different ways to silence him and also now to break that evasion, of course, with the blood thorn. His teammates can hit through it at least, unless it gets manted off. So both teams do have that gem picked up, so the vision game will be slowed down on both sides, but LFY should be able to win it because you know, they, have, they have Night Stalker. Right, so Cuckoo is just going to continue to buy items for himself, as you said. So he's going to go swap here. out the armlet. Okay. Yeah. So instead of going for an extra armor item, he wants to be able to do more, more damage and better ways to push out the lanes, because they're starting to struggle to deal with this Nature Prophet's split push. Here we go, armlet gone. And the recipe picked up, just needs to get that Hyper Stone from the side shop. Yep. Then we can definitely expect the Axe. Mjolnir is super useful though. With the Mjolnir, with the Shivas, with Octarine, you throw that on yourself, you just kind of run into the fights. It's also great versus the Tower Blade Illusions, of course, so he can, he can get a good amount of healing and able to actually clear versus it. And yeah, Aya Scotty now finished up for Monet. He, that recovery. Yeah, he's played it perfectly, Monet. Top three now. 1 0 and 7. All of that down to, of course, uh, DDC's play as well. Many times that we saw Monet living on the edge, but DDC came in with the clutch saves. Rose should be spawning, or uh, spawning relatively soon. TNC He's with this movement. Smoke. They're looking for some action. Hunting down Arfu, they will manage to find the connection with the Burrow Strike. Ice Path and Concoction. Finally, after a bit of a slumber in the game, TNC break it by finding Arfu out and alone. Super, it, Super's there, though, cutting the wave, so nothing more that TNC can do with their presence down on this bottom lane. TNC made a, made a play around their only ward vision that they did have. The one that's half duration in the enemy jungle. Oh, they just tried to make something. 
Because they definitely feel, you know, that map is starting to close on them a bit with LFY all farming all over the place. And they only have the alpha. Keep mentioning over and over again who is farming. Super looking for the Lincoln Sphere next. Once that is on, he is going to be feeling incredibly free in these team fights. Top lane, Kuku's being eyed up. LFY with four in the neighborhood. They're ready to try and make a play here onto the Alchemist, Kuku. He's going to get himself out. Already has used the Manta, so now there's the chance for Inflame to go in with a silence. Oh, they might think that's the real oh, one. They've he moved the it away. Indeed. Oh, the bait is perfect. Cuckoo. He's out mind game them. Now goes for the TP. Super they've got a Yule. have the Yules and will manage to hold him back. Canceling the teleport. But Super, he can try and turn a fight. He needs backup from his team. His team are on the way. But it's actually Arfu keeping TNC away from getting there in time. Cuckoo has one more use of the Manta. Style. Will bring down DDC. But that's Cuckoo down. The that's wolf. a massive kill. Arfu, seeing if they can maybe set up a more. Look at this trap here. Tibbs is just surrounded. No escape for him there as the illusions from the Terror Blade and the Treans. Did anyone pick up the gem that the Jakiro, I think, had? Or that somebody. I see it. Oh, no, it's up there. They're pinging it. They know, Still though. Still at the top. That's the, the Dazzle had it. He was pinging it. Yeah. DDC's like, wait a minute. They didn't take it. So they send the courier up there. But really nice engagement. Even though it wasn't the smoothest of entries, we saw them go on the illusion. But then Arfu, as I say, we, we kind of saw it at the bottom there. He, he sort of held back TNC. TNC were trying to make their way up to help Cuckoo. But Arfu was kind of like, hey, come and look at me, guys. And indeed, that sort of slowdown has enabled LFY to now be in this position to break the high ground with the, the last few seconds of Metamorphosis. It is now gone. Super jumping in, two-man silence, get the Dream Coil onto the tanking. There's the sleep from Tim's. And they're all lined up for the ice Very, path. very, very lined up here. 1437, he lays down the ice path. A physical connect onto his play, but the combo comes in. The point of there is the urban center from Savage. Takes down two. Super trying to jump his way out, but Raven's there with the ultimate. Tim's as well, looking to change that again. No, the ice path won't connect. Bleaks out, but the route's through. Tim's closes the gap. TNC hold. Perfect song there from Tim's to set everything up. And that push ground to an absolute halt. You couldn't ask for a better situation to happen right there. Literally all four of them in a perfect line for the ice path for the Sanking follow-up. Great defense there from TNC. It only required the Naga to buy back there. I was worried. I was like, I think they might have to buy back the, Al back by the Alchemist, but yeah, perfect. Let's see it again. Look at this lineup. I mean, as you say, yeah, Tim's having the fortitude to buy oh, back. Look at that. I mean, 40, 30, he could have got all four, did only get three of them. Oh, it's still pretty. Nah, he goes for the three big ones. Make sure that he gets both Super and Monet in there. And indeed, Sam H, no, no hesitation as he follows through with the combo. And now Roche respawns right afterwards. So TNC makes their way in there. Gonna pick up an easy age of cheese. And now the Aghanim Scepters will be coming out. Did he actually buy one yet? No, he's got 4,000. He's ready to go. There we have it, indeed. Roche is down, TNC. They're trying to make a move right away. They still have 20 seconds until the puck respawns. They're trying to get a pickoff to keep LFY one man down. So next big item pickups for TNC will be the Lotus Orbs to deal with the Sunder whenever Monet is able to get that off. And we already see Sam H grab one up. I think Tim's had one in his quick buy as well. He does. And I think I thought, saw Jakiro as well with him. But no, okay, he took, it, took whatever item he had as a quick buy out. The Lotus Orbs, of course, super useful versus Sunder to reflect that. Negate the heal. Did they get anything with the smoke? Looks like it is just a smoke and back off. Yeah, now everybody's up. They wanted to try to take advantage of when somebody was dead. Kuku with his arcane rune at this stage. Gonna put an extra bit of a speed boost to his farming potential. Yep. As he still sits comfortably, of course, at the top. In flame, though, very much... Uh, he is getting a lot on this nature's problem. He's so halfway through level 24, nearly at the 25. Very close to having a full-out Miona himself as well. His damage is, is still very high. Never can sleep on Nature's Prophet. And Super. TNC, TNC starting to move in. Yeah, they are looking towards Super here on this top lane. The upgraded bots allowing Cuckoo to come in on top of 1437. Super's in the tree line. We'll see if they can find him. Shivas won't quite catch him in the area. And he is out in the trees. They do not have any sort of cancel or vision to hold him back. But on the side of it all, Sam H does get the stun onto Inflame. He wants to BKB TP, but Tim's is starting to make it closer. Is he able to get the net off in time? I it's don't gonna think so. It's going to be close, but... Yeah, not quite there. Inflame will keep himself alive. Second BKB usage. And this is definitely turning out to be quite the game that we hoped it to be. Both sides really giving it their all here on the main stage. 23-15, 5k lead for TNC. 
but definitely a, a game that could still swing both ways around as we can see there. You know, one fight and a sharp drop off for one of the sides. Yeah. Agony Berserk is almost finished up. He starts bringing it out to pick up the point booster. Giving it to Raven also doesn't just make it so that he's more farmed, of course, which he's, he's started to catch up heavily because of the fights, but then they actually have better siege to kill towers with that Aghanim's upgrade. Which is really just the Alchemist to start hitting towers at this moment. Ooh, until that then. illusion nearly took down that, that Aghanim's delivery there. They will still get it over safely. And Cuckoo, where is it going? It actually goes to Tim's. It goes okay. to Tim's. I mean, he did pull off a brilliant sleep play. I think you have to reward that. And as you know, as we're saying, the heal it is incredibly substantial. And it's Tim's. It's Tim's. If you're <laughs> going to trust anyone to get the sleep off at the clutch moment to, to give you that 70% health regen, I mean, it's just essentially it's, it's a second life for your whole team if it's timed right. And yeah. Tim's certainly playing at the top of his game here in this in this first game of the series. We can expect some big plays to happen with that. Definitely, no, this is something as well that Tim's he, he can make his name even bigger Bottom with this. Lane. We don't see a lot of Agnims. Nagasaran plays. Bottom lane though indeed. 1437 jumped upon. Does manage to get the cheese, get the cheese out. And now look for the turnaround. Super. Will Yules up to Dr. Kogotra, but they still find the connection. Has the face shift. Will be able to blink out of this. And indeed down to the bottom. Can they actually catch him out? He's in the trees with the orb. He's fine. Just a little too slippery. Cheese still forced. very hard to catch this this puck. No doubt about it. Cheese forced. Reactions for us as well. Now they go back to the other side of the map. Yeah. We're pushing the lanes. And it's going to be a little harder to do as well for LF White for Super if they see 1437 out on his own because he now does have a Yule Scepter himself. Now they've got level 25 Nature's Prophet. Oh, he actually misclicks his BKB. Oh. Just testing to see if it works. We, right? we didn't see that on the mainstream fog. He's just testing it. That's, that's, right? that's the way it works. <laughs> See if we do mid. Monet. Raven. Finding Monet here. Cuckoo's going to charge up the concoction. We'll throw it out. PKP comes out straight away. Monet, no messing around. Knows that he has to save himself. Can't leave open any opportunity for him to be caught out like that. Doesn't even risk trying to go for the man to no. dodge. Just all out goes for the BKB. So 45 minutes in. We've got double catapult waves coming in. We've got double runes, of course, too. We'll start playing a favor. His bottom. bottom lane. Tim's in. bringing in Cuckoo. They are going to try and set up with the sleep. They managed to find him. Do they have the connection? The concoction is going to come up earlier. But now, with the back of his damage, Super's actually trying to TP in to save this. The Zion's of Green Cold comes through, but in flame just melts, disappears immediately. Super down deep in the trees will be fine. But this is 90 seconds where they don't have to worry about that Inflame Nature's Prophet being out on the map. TNC can definitely give it a good shot trying to force out that buyback. Mid lane though, 1437 being gone upon, has the self fuels, but with three heroes surrounding him, very little chance of him getting home alive as 1437 will be gone. Yeah, he's but probably straight away, it's, you know, TNC are down bottom, they're fine with this, this attention being drawn towards mid. Aegis gets reclaimed. What can they do to stop this? Metamorphosis is popped. Starting to beat into Cuckoo. They're getting, they're getting pincered on though here in the back. Oh, they are. This wraparound coming through. TPL straight away. No, he cancels it. Wants to try and find this Cuckoo and help his teammates. They get the silence out of the Night Stalker. Super bringing them away. Has a haste run as well, Money. Forcing himself forward, trying to close the gap. They really want to catch something here with this metamorphosis. Oh, that dodge of the concoction. Very nice. Super is not going to jump forward though. They're unable to get anything. So meta now will be down for the next engagement. Yeah, TNC are They're already down. resetting. They're trying to get in there while, while that meta goes down. Yeah, this is the perfect time. With those last few seconds of metamorphosis, if they can get that jump. And Cuckoo is being spotted out again by the illusions being spread out from Monet. Oh, by nose. How much can TNC do with that metamorphosis down? They are still without 1437. Only 10 seconds until Inflame is back as well. They, they, they really want to be able to kill Tim's in these fights, but with the Guardian Greaves and how tank, innately tanky Naga is, it's really hard to just move all the silences and always able to get that sleep off, so it's super threatening. And we've got the next Aghanims coming out as well from Cuckoo. This one, it is going to go the way. Who's he giving it to? It's just going the way of Raven, yeah. as you expected, yeah. Those are two more important ones. I mean, Sankings is also super important, but letting Raven get that surge of gold is important. He's still not at, He's not where he ideally really would want to be as a Raven. Super. We don't really have any sort of instant lockdown though, so Super is fine. We'll jump back up. We're going to the rack. there. Inflame is now pushing in top and pushing in middle. Yeah, really nice use of these Terrorblade illusions to keep all lanes pushed out away from LFY's base. 
GNC, they really need to, yeah, they've got to back up, they've got to try and push one of their waves up with them, protect it against this illusion spam from LFY that's coming out from Monet to make sure that they have a chance of actually doing damage to the, the barracks of LFY. Kuku has enough for that Aghanims, almost with Ags and buyback for that final one. Then he can start giving moon shards and eating moon shards himself. I mean, don't forget the Jakira Ags as well. Yep. Oh, there's a hefty bit in the fights. It's more about high ground defense for that one at least, but yeah, it, sure. it, it could so be It's the it last on the list. Yeah, it could be massive. MKB now out for Mone, so he is really going to be packing a punch. It's getting to the point where it may even be impossible for TNC to, to think about taking a fight when he has Metamorphosis up. He definitely has the, the potential to kill the Alchemist. And almost level 25, so he gets that extra stats that push him forward, unless he chooses for the Sunder cooldown, but... Let's see what we've got here, TNC. I'm ready to push forward. Raven trying to build up his damage from the illusion. Being from Inflame will have the sprout. Still teasing around, no one yet to, to commit anything heavy. God, Reflection is such a strong spell. Every time they walk up with the Alchemist, the Reflection starts to do a crazy amount of straight damage. Straight out, look with the blood form. Cuckoo has to Manta and get himself forced out immediately. Dream Call dropped down, only connects onto Raven. There's the song though. Tims. Making sure that the side is safe. They have to retreat. They will. I mean, again, it's the same thing. Metamorphosis is out. TNC say, all right, we'll back off. We'll try and use the next thing. But of course, LFY, they really want to fight with this. They come through with Inflame, post the BKB. But he's netted up, held back. Silence is out. Onto the Cuckoo night. suns himself. Guardian who grieves himself out. Force forward, trying to get Cuckoo out of there. Super jumping in. Cuckoo's still alive for the time being. Arfu trying to chase him down. They've got the reflection. It's not quite enough to kill Cuckoo. He will survive. Grave comes out from DDC to try and save Arfu, but he ticks out to the fire from. 1437. So all in all, LFY that wants to lose one of these, and now TNC is ready to go back in. They know that the metamorphosis is falling down. They get the bonus strike connection. Super will jump in with the silence. Okay, the buyback. The option. There's the grave. Looking for the center, but the loads is off. He doesn't get the center. The loads play is there. TNC, they break down the terror blade. What a clutch Lotus off. And TNC, they're not done yet. They've got the vision on DDC in the trees. They'll take down the Dazzle as well. And now they're ready to go to the high ground. Buyback from DDC. Arfu. It's back door Monet. though. They're ready. LFY is addressing the issue that the, there's no buyback on Terrorblade. But they're look at the damage. With the ults as well. The Aghanim's ultimate from Raven. They'll clean up this bottom lane of Rax. Maybe even more. They're looking towards mid. Inflame heavy with the split push pressure right down the middle lane. They don't have the creeps. They now don't have the ultimate anymore from Raven, but still. They're slowly but surely doing it down this middle lane. In flame, he's committing to that middle. Wants to try and find something in return. He's onto the tier three. No, there's the jump off. The dream call goes through. Canceling Savage his TPL. There's no way for the for Sam to get back. He's going to be going back in a coffin. He's out for 80 seconds. Super trying to play with the rest of them, allowing In flame to get the job done down the middle lane. He's still going. Sam down H on that right. They've got Sam H and 1437 back at base, looking to hold. In flame pops the BKB, looking for the TPL. PL, they don't have enough damage to go through it, so we they gotta kill the catapults. Yeah, they gotta kill the catapults. That melee rack's falling low, but as we saw, they've got to be aware of this split push still mid lane, playing around with Cuckoo. They won't go in for the kill though, the backup's not quite there. So at the end of the day, the job is certainly done by TNC. They get the full bottom lane of racks. Mid lane is held onto though, and in flame doing everything he can to slow down TNC. Super clutch, clutch plays coming out from everybody on TNC. That Lotus Orb, like you said, reflecting that Sunder. Turning the fight around completely. Everyone absolutely playing to their best ability here. This is quite the show between these two sides. There's Lotus another Aghanims. The final eggs. And, oh, you know, just another casual 6,000 gold, of course. Oh God, we got three. Into Sam H's pocket. So the press now as well for teams. And speed up that Roche potential if they want to go for it. Still very hard for TNC to, to really walk straight into the pit and try and take it. Mid lane, jump forward with the silence. See if they can try and get a wrap around already. Arfu towards the left, but he's actually going to get caught out by that Axe Burrow Strike. Samage with the range, but the Ice Pass not quite there. Get himself over the tree line. TNC, they don't really want to go up to the high ground here. Bit of an awkward place for them to fight in. So the back off, the weave's on them as well. Yeah, four men weave. Flame again, keeping this pressure on. Top lane being shoved in. I mean, this is this is crazy, really. We've seen how much of a free game Cuckoo has. We're, we're 52 minutes in. Inflame's only 7,000 behind him. That that just goes to show how farmed this Nature's Prophet is. He's got 520 
CS. Yeah, so 10, CS, 10 CS a minute on that Nature's Prophet. Has to address the issues of the split push always. Yeah, always has to be pushing those lanes out. Night Stalker actually now has the uh, Apu has the Agonim Scepter finished up, so they can actually get take the fights easier because now they have the vision advantage in them. And I think Super also, I believe, hit level 25 for that GPM talent. Yeah, so full hex now finished up and buyback. The hex can be super significant to isolate that alchemist because that was that last fight was super close to him dropping down, but they were able to turn it around. Just the four staff defensive play from TMT was. Incredibly well done. He's gonna find Alpu on the side of it all. Will flap himself away, trying to escape the Kokochi Connect. Sparrow Strike as well. Grave from DDC comes out. Can they do anything with return? Money trying to go for Tims is trying to sleep again. Hex. Money to hex him up. He can't quite get the sleep off. He's taken down. TNC have lost two. Super jumping in. Cuckoo's armor falling low because of the weave. Money coming for. In front of Tims, they found three. They're looking for Raven. He's oh up in the air, but they surround the Razor. Raven down as well. LFY making the hole jungle and now raven and tims without buyback in flame already in position in the middle lane trying to push down 1437 buys back in they do have the alchemist so still good amounts of deep push super's hex so clutch in that, that fight right there not allowing tims to get the sleep off and then the mkb and the weaves just started kicking in now they're going into the roast pit meta is still active for about 10 more seconds or 15 more seconds and they should be able to bring this roast down but yeah he gets the hex and within 15 to 20 seconds makes Almost a game-winning play out of it. Absolutely. That swing is almost 10,000 gold now going for LFY. And we saw that as well. I believe that the um, the Lotus Orb was already on the target, yeah. but he just goes for it anyway. He says, it's all right if I sell fakes. We need to get that target locked down. That's the thing. They only have they do only have that one Lotus Orb. Yeah. They don't have several ones. That's they what we were addressing a little bit. Several Lotus Orbs is the way to go versus Terror Blades especially. And now that there's a Hex, we're probably going to see them address that issue by picking up more of those. But here we see yeah. the Hex comes out as the Lotus Orb comes out. Oh, and actually, and he, has well, he has the Lincoln, yeah, so, so he hex. doesn't care about the Lotus. Indeed, yeah. the Lincoln's still blocking that return. So indeed, perfect build from Super. I mean, if they had got that song off, it would have been an incredibly different story there. Yep. No doubt about it. How many buybacks was that? That was two. So we have the Alchemist buyback and the Jakiro buyback there. Now they're scared. Now this is where TNC is in a position where they don't... It's just that super slick. If Alchemist dies, they just lose the game. Yeah. So he actually has to buy a full BKB here just in case to be defensive. And they can't really leave their base now, which gives LFY a huge opportunity to farm the whole map, which they're not really needing too much anymore. They're all kind of hitting their critical mass point. But it is that double runes that we were mentioning. That could be the crucial thing they need. Maybe they find a clutch double damage as it is bottom, or an arcane rune, something along those lines that can help them for those type of fights. And we actually did see um, Monet went for the Sunder cooldown. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of because it's that 10 second cooldown can be so absurd in those fights, especially when you're playing with Dazzle. I yes. think that's one of the You're always going to have the chance to, yeah. to get that second life off, and, unless you're getting mass silence down and such. But yeah, with the BKB and the Manta, like if you get graved, this should be the chance. Yeah, if you get graved and you get your Sunder off right at the start of the grave, then you have only five seconds where the grave wears off where you have a secondary Sunder. So I think that's one of the instances you can go TNC for. with the smoke up, but Super's there with an Invis. He knows what's going on. Get the Hex up immediately. Five back coil! Oh, and the coil on to all five! In flame up on the high ground. TNC gets the ultimate off. It's starting to regen the back up. The regen doing work as they're brought back up to full HP. Now the turnaround with the Ice Pump. They've got the lockdown on Sin Flame. No BKB now, but Monet is tag teamed in. The Grave coming out rather early, but it's allowing Monet to go out. Looks towards Raven. Raven, can he keep himself alive? There's the buyback from In Flame. He's looking to come in for the finisher. They've taken down the same. They've isolated Kuku. In Flame, can he fight Kuku? The Sprout from In Flame forcing him to take the long way round. Buying time for Monet to force himself forward. Kuku's still so down by the Scotty, but he does get just enough far away. Can they turn back in? Into this, they're looking for Monet. Concoctions out, will connect. Ice bump off the back, but now with the ultimate from 1437, he's bringing the terrible League down low. Not quite enough to finish him off, though. LFY. Do they really want to go in for this push? In flame, straight up on the top, making sure pressure's kept in on all sides of the map. Matters down. They got to reset. Wait for that to come back online. I think, did he, uh, did DC misclick the grave there? Is that what I'd seen? He I think went he very clicked, early. He graved Monet, I believe, yeah. there, instead of the Nature's Prophet, who was dying. So I think that was a slight misclick there coming out from DDC in that last engagement. And it forces Inflame to buy back. So now there's that, that thing for TNC, where if they kill the Nature's Prophet, it could be a pretty good uh, access point for them. But Absolutely. the rest of LFY does have buyback, and he's not as crucial as, let's say, the TNC's Optimist. 
Look at this though, smoke up immediately. Well, this is not going to be expected at LFY, all. Yeah, TNC there just hanging outside the base here. This is very scary. Tims does have the song, he needs to use it. Hex comes out there, the dream bomb there, the song comes through. Monik off the BKB, roots out, but he mantles it off. Back up to full health again. The Axe on Doom right now. The turn. Ice Bar out onto the Terra Blade. DDC is there with the backup available. They'll force Mone back. There's the grave. Sonder keeps Mone alive. Cuckoo forced back up to the high ground. LFY. They do still do this. There's the disarm onto Inflame. Held back. TNC still keeping LFY away from the barracks. 10 seconds until Sam H is back in. So again. Despite Monet and DDC's play, it's enough to keep them alive, but it's not enough to, to get the kills on TNC and actually break this mid, that, mid lane. They tried to go for a very cute play there that no one would expect. Meta's down, you're expecting off to completely back off. Tried to get a nice kill off of it, but unable to with Tim's positioning over there on the right side. So still, same thing. They need to find a way to isolate Tim's, get that hex on him so that he's unable to get those sleeps off. These sleeps have been absolutely massive from Tim's. Yeah, perfect. Perfect positioning. Money racking up on Super, definitely uh, can start to get the Moonshards out. There's already the Moonshard on Monet. Uh, is he given one to Inflame? Not one yet given to Inflame. Could be next on his shopping list. On the puck. I just know, it's the refresher. He goes all oh. in. I mean, to be fair, we have seen these big Dream Coils and Waning Rifts and the Hex. If he can get this all out twice, yeah. it's going to be incredible. And Super, to be fair, you know, the panel said, and I joked about it at the start, seeing him in on the puck, but he has had an incredible game. 10, 4, yeah. and 12. And these late game plays and decisions that he has made. He's been getting super clutch silences in the back. And we saw what, two or three, four man, five man coils, and then the sleep's following up. If the sleep wasn't there, those fights are absolutely one for LFY. And now, yeah, he has double hex too, so he can choose a little bit better. And if the Lotus Orb doesn't move the hex, then he can refresh and go for it again after he uses all of his other uh, equipment and spells, of course. Haste. Why? Still very much ready to try and do something. Metamorphosis is back and available. Many of the heroes approaching their level 25. CSC's coming out, but they're raining on the high ground here. There's the jump in. Super gets immediately in with the hex. Onto Tim's removed by the Lotus Storm. Falls back, but he's stunned. He can't get off the song. And the Lotus Storm is stunned. I think he's going to get open time. He's trying to see the move. He can't. That Tim's down 80 seconds. They've lost 40 37 as well. TNC at that three savage. Coming in with the Epic Fire Strike. Is it enough to get the kill in return? Looking for Mone. Raven stolen a lot of damage here, but Mone is dead. dead. Razor will buy back, so will Sam H. There's no creeps. But there's no backup for the rest of the three of them. They're trying to fight against this backdoor regen. They should slowly but surely be able to get there's at least glyph, one though. of the racks. They're going to have to clip oh, it and do. heal it up. They're, are they going to be able to hold this, Sam H, him and the burrow? They've got a minute, them down. a minute 20 for Alchemist buyback. And LFI knows they've got to try and get the kills on the side. Inflame does TP in immediately with the Sandstorm. Sam H gets away. There's your fortification. And now the glyph is gone. All right, now the uh, back door protection is gone. The creeps have gone. And it in. plays back in immediately, looking to finish off this mid lane of racks. They're looking to possess you go for the game. They get the hex in time. They're going to your forest. They're going for the game. They're going for the finisher. 30 seconds until the Naga's back. Maybe could look for a sleep play to slow things down. But the speed that LFY are moving in means that it may be too long. 20 seconds, no Naga. They're onto the base. LFY looking to close up game one here. No way by the looks of it that TNC could slow this one down. Despite their best attempts at indeed, GG is cool. Wow, LFY what a game. Game one. Holy crap. What a start to this series. What a back and forth game though. Incredible plays coming out from TNC with their coming to their four stabs, to their sleeps, of course, to the setups with the Jakiro Ice Path, Macro Pyre combos and sinking. Everything going super, super well for TNC, but LFY coming in clutch at the end. Afu and Inflame carrying super hard in that early Ooh. to mid game, and then super coming super. in clutch with that hex yeah, at the, the end. The hex plays from super at the end, absolutely incredible. And just again, this sort of coordination we've expected from LFY as a team. Giving DDC the dazzle, you're, you're going to have troubles. And we, we saw yeah. time and time again those last few sieges as well. DDC enabling Monet, enabling Inflame. And Inflame, uh, so, such bold plays as well, consistently teeping on the other side yeah. of the team, coming in from behind them. And they just didn't expect it. They found so many pickoffs in the mid game with that Night Stalker, Nature's Prophet. They played it super good to let Monet get back online. That was incredibly impressive because of such a deficit that they're playing at in third, for the first like 20 minutes, pretty much. This Alchemist is just raining chaos all over the place, but able to get some map control coming out and they take the win. Yeah, just the right amounts of pressure as well being put on from LFY at the end. You know, getting these openings, making sure the buybacks aren't there for TNC.
and coming in with that hard-hitting finishing push. What a game one, ladies and gentlemen. Myself and Fob, we'll see you soon for game two. But for now, back to Day9 and the boys to hear what they have to say about that 61-minute spectacle. Thank you, OD Fog. What a game. At 60 minutes into the game, there was less than a 3K net worth difference between the two teams. It was hard fought and, frankly, the closest game of the tournament thus far. For sure. And I think it just comes down to what uh, Peter said in the beginning, that their, their uh, course from TNC just wasn't good against the uh, TB. They had Alchemist and they had Razor, and none of them is really good, like super late game against uh, TB. Razor was pretty underwhelming. He worked really well in lane when Terrorblade was mostly fighting in melee form, but yeah. as soon as Terrorblade got a couple items, got the Manta online, started you know popping off meta in fights and spawning illusions, Razor just really didn't have a place. I still thought TNC were going to win, though. They had that great yeah. execution in the team fights with the sleep. Supers, yeah. Supers Puck was, it was a hero. Questionable he hasn't played a lot this minutes. tournament. It started off slow, but I thought towards the yeah. end of the series, or towards the end of that match, he really started to pick it up, and he made some really great plays. Yeah, the incredible dream coils. I and mean, especially in mid, he got just solo killed by an alchemist. Yeah, that's that. That's I'm sure that he was trying happen. to. He was making some aggressive play. You know, yeah. we would have yeah. been like, "Oh my God, super!" If he killed the alchemist, it just uh, <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> And I got to give a huge shout out to Afu on the Night Stalker for again and again and again getting a. He was had a hundred percent kill participation for the first sixteen kills. Four players are the stars of this tournament. Yeah, it's yeah. been like that for quite some time now. That the four position is so important for a team to actually work. Yep. Yeah, the four position most often the position that is roaming around trying to make plays, not staying in lane. Talking a little bit about the early game, we got Purge here who specifically, uh, I understand Sand King was of great yeah. interest to you in the early game. Yeah, Sand King. Uh, he wasn't the four position, but we have seen a lot of Sand Kings played in the four position. Um, the way that they ended up doing their lanes was very smart from TNC. They were the, clearly the ones that were doing abnormal matchups with the aggro try, um, as well as the 1v1s in the other lanes. And we really did see a lot of the value. Razor was good against Terrorblade at the laning stage, as well as with their two supports. It worked out really nicely. They forced a grave from Dazzle. So as a whole, it felt like TNC was putting pressure on and allowed the other lanes to actually be 1v1s. But the player I really want to talk about was Sam H, because his early rotation here ended up at least trading kills. So even though Alchemist did die in some of these engagements, I thought he was really instrumental towards making sure that they, they at least stay caught up and that their aggro try um, is not completely uh, f for a full loss. And I was very surprised how much damage he did. And I, it really comes back to the map. He was in a 1v1 situation against the Nature's Prophet, normally a four position, or in a rare case, maybe a solo offlane. So because he had all of these early levels, um, it really helped him uh, have bigger impacts in these early parts of the game. And this is maybe the, the most crucial areas at the like eight to 12 minute mark. That's usually when the carries uh, leave their safe lane. He was always staying top and doing so to ensure that um, his, his team was able to split push off on the bot lane. If we take a look down here, you can just kind of see. They're just always pushing the bot lane out. Sam H is dodging the ganks, making sure that he doesn't act, end up going down. And because of this, and all of these engagements, he's putting himself in danger. He's split pushing a little bit and forcing four heroes to spend time trying to kill him. And these clips are all in a period of around eight minutes to about 12.30. And yeah, he does end up dying at the end here, but the same kind of principle shows. If you, again, look at the tier two tower, his team ends up trading a tier two tower for his own tier one, which is really not a bad trade at all. So I really liked what he did between the eight and 12 minute mark, really gave his team a lot of space and helped them stay even despite the early pressure. I mean, it was that sort of pressure that I actually think Naga was able to begin putting pressure on the tier three tower at close to 15 minutes into the game. I mean, the number of times that TNC just continued to get close to that tier three tower again and again, but amazingly, LFY did not even let the bottom racks fall. I really would have wanted to see they like, use the, the Naga more for a, a team fight uh, and not just to run away. Because a lot of the times uh, before the 40 minute mark, he used the sleep to just get away instead of like poking them a bit. And then when they group up, sleep. And then as they did in the like, 40 minute fight, they sleep like four of them in a uh, like, line. They put all of the twin spells and everything, and they just kill everyone. But I think they could have done it that earlier. Their fights were very focused on them kiting the Terrorblade out. And whenever that Puck Coil came out, that was a controlled situation where Terrorblade could pump in some damage. And that's when they were using that sleep to counter initiate. So it would have been nice to see them set up fights and start that way. But I'm not sure if they really had it another choice. I don't think they had an opportunity to fight that Terrorblade head on because they didn't have enough AOE to deal with all the illusions. For sure. Yeah, especially once Terrorblade got the level 25 talent and was in the position to be able to use Sunder every 10 seconds, especially in that long last siege, we saw Terrorblade constantly gobbling up the fresh Alchemist health to stay alive. Terrorblade Dazzle is a nice combination. We've seen it, um, I think we've seen it a couple times this tournament, but that, that combo's been around ever since Terrorblade got introduced into the game.
And the fights that were really long, too. Like, we yeah. started to stack up, and uh, the sixth item <laughs> on Alchemist was Mjolnir instead of AC. It's pretty yeah. a common pickup, but, or a typical pickup, but he needed it. He needed the AoE versus Terrorblade, but then he didn't have enough armor, and he actually just died a lot of the, the time. The Dazzle yeah. Weave had a huge impact in this game. It's Dazzles are here we've seen a little bit of. Uh, OG, OG played it yesterday, but in this, like, ultra-late game scenario, that Weave is... It is king. Yeah, especially the fact that the Weave was able to pop off so early in the fights that Alchemist, I mean, I was shocked at how much he was getting chunked down. The fights lasted for a long time, so tons of positive <laughs> took armor. took up so much on space on the map. Yeah, tons of negative armor on that Alchemist, making him uh, pretty simple to kill for Terrorblade. And I got to say, this is the sort of match that people get hyped about for TI. Of course, LFY still living up to their high win rate at the tournament, but TNC showing that they're a contender as we've currently seen the closest first game yet. Let's go ahead and head on over to Casey and Slacks to get their slot on the, on the series. Hello!